Hi, yeah. Um, I'm Black Bright, uh, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time, yeah, I decided to um, talk about YouTubers and tax because you know I'm new to YouTube or relatively new to YouTube. Um, I've got, you know, I think about 7,000 subscribers. So I'm not like those people who've got 100,000, 200,000 and a million subscribers. I'm not as um, established as that. So, but I'm really grateful to all my subscribers. But the reason why I decided to talk about tax is because I realise that even though I'm getting just a few quid, that there's no way you can be getting money from YouTube and not paying tax on it. Then I started wondering, so if you are getting money into your account, how does the tax man know how much you're getting and how do they know and how is that taxed? You know what I mean? Is it dependent on you um, telling the tax man how much you've made and how much all the tax went to writing to you and telling you. Well, the onus now is on the individual. That's the first thing. Um, they put the onus on the individual. The tax man is not now going to come to you and say you owe such and such a much, such and such an amount. It's up to the individual. So YouTubers who are making all those bucks, I mean, I can imagine how much some of them are making. I saw this girl who's 18, and I think she's making £400,000 a month. I mean, she is advertising products herself, as well as some other stuff. I don't know what she's doing. But can you imagine that amount of money? And then I'm wondering, has she, she's so young. I'm wondering, has she got an accountant? Is she aware of um, the tax that she's got to pay? In the UK, it's 20%. I don't know what it is anywhere else. And that's only up to a certain amount. I think it's up to 50,000, but I'm not sure. I'm going to have to find that out. But for all of those YouTubers who think that they can get away with earning um, from YouTube and not pay the correct amount of tax, they're going to be in a very, very sticky situation. The tax office have invested billions into this new technology. It's a new computer software called Connect. And it connects not only in the UK, but around the world. So each country has got a Connect system and they're all interlinked. And what they do, they don't rely on you telling them how much money you have earned. The banks tell them how much interest they have paid. They send the tax office a statement at the end of every month of the interest paid to each person. And now it's all fed into the system. I mean, it's all done in a matter of seconds, so they don't have to wade through it themselves. But all that information is fed to the, um, the HMRC, as in the UK, and based on the interest, they can tell how much money you have in that account. They don't need you to tell them. So anyhow you've been dodging or you've been saying, okay, I, I'm only going to say I got this amount. There's no way they can find out. They've actually got access to your bank accounts as well now. Oh, yeah, they've got access to your bank accounts. And they don't need your permission. I don't know if you remember, I did this um, video on double authentication. That was to do with online um, online purchasing. But it's the same principle. It's still giving a third party access to your bank details. And so I don't know if a lot of the YouTube, maybe, maybe they're experienced, maybe they're curious just like I was. I know there's no way you can get money and not pay tax on it. I know that. So even if I don't tell them and you know, I'm fortunate enough that I'm curious and I haven't been doing it very long, but I thought to myself, you know what? And it's only like the last month or so I got a couple of quid. And then I thought to myself, well, you know, I've got this couple of quid. What, you know, I'm sure I'm going to have to pay tax on it.
And so then, you know, just I think the, just the other day before, I decided to actually Google it. And there was a few sites that are telling you, you know, they're telling you how to pay the tax, but not many were telling you how the tax is assessed or how the taxman knows how much you're earning from YouTube or AdSense or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to read this out quickly. It's going to be my um, last um, video for a couple of days. So, just wanted to say the taxman has shocking new powers to look at bank accounts with absolutely no warning. The HMRC can request information from People's Bank, from state agents and other third parties without notifying the individual. HMRC can examine taxpayers' personal bank account statements. They can demand sight of the taxpayers' private bank statements if it believes their declared business income does not support their private cash outgoings. The first tier tax tribunal has found it demanded full disclosure for their bank accounts. The thing is, when you're um, a YouTuber now, you have to set up, you have to um, do this self-assessment through through the um, HMRC. Um, if you are a YouTuber and you monetize your videos either via AdSense or a partner in YouTube network, your earnings are taxable in the UK and all money made via your channel, once it reaches your bank or PayPal account, you are liable to pay tax on it, whether it's £2, £200 or £2,000. The HMRC's impressive new Connect software is seriously efficient. The speed at which the data banks can be interrogated are both increasing. More than a billion items of data from 30 sources already fall within its scopes, according to the accountancy group BDO, which has just published a report on HMRC's digital evolution. The software called Connect, which was launched in 2008, has been developed at the cost of over £80 million over seven years and is accessing and trawling databases of personal financial information on an unprecedented scale. From dozens of sources in its hunt for underpaid tax and is about to have access to even more information which can be shared with 60 other countries. Its basic job is to scour vast data banks of personal and commercial information, seeking to unearth links between individual taxpayer and business income assets and transactions. It then matches its findings against their return. Discrepancies are flagged and could prompt a tax investigation. The searches take a mere seconds and are untake, undertaken repeatedly to capture new information. Also, the taxman pays 600000 to informers. So they've got, inf that, you know, if, you, if somebody knows that you're avoiding tax or you're not, you're not paying tax, the taxman's given them 600000 apparently. As with any software, things can go wrong, which could lead to unwarranted prosecutions and penalties. It also reminds us of how of how much of our personal information residing in the hands of the state, but is personal is personal really personal anymore? One of Connect's biggest jobs is to hunt for income disparities. It will process the information about your bank account balances and income and match this with other information, mainly your tax return and, for example, your PAYE data submitted by your employer. If the information doesn't tally, start preparing your answers. HMRC targets Etsy, eBay and Gumtree sellers. But when is a hobby taxable? See, you know, I didn't even think about that. You know when people advertise their stuff on get income from eBay and stuff, you don't really think that you have to put in a tax return. But it's called a hobby. It's a busy. It's a business as far as they're concerned. Connect can detect income from overseas. The taxman will want to know 
will want not only that income to be properly taxed, but information about its source. Is there a business or property generating that income? And if so, are there taxes due? It's all about the tax. So as long as YouTube money is going into your bank and it is not being withheld by AdSense, you have to pay on it. You see, AdSense, they can hold it for you up to a year and then you won't have to pay tax. But as soon as it hits your bank account, you do. Connect also identifies whether investors have exceeded their annual ISA allowance. HMRC has for years had access to land registry databases. The land registry typically, typically holds details of the price you paid for a property and your mortgage lender by cross-references stamp duty records with the land registry files. Connect can identify where capital gains tax is thought to be owing. HMRC has not, as yet, according to a number of accountants, representing a large... Hold on. HMRC has not yet, according to a number of accountants representing large landlords, made blanket demands of estate agencies to provide list of clients and the rents paid to them. But this would be within the powers under Schedule 36, wide-ranging legislation which gives the tax on power to force third parties to disclose data where it believes there is a lot of underreporting of tax. HMRC uses data collecting programs or robots to patrol proper, popular online marketplaces such as eBay and Gumtree. Connect on the 150 HMRC analysts, analysts who pour over the results it generates, deploy something called lifestyle profiling in their efforts to unearth anomalies and unpaid tax. If you drive an expensive vehicle, according to the records held by DVLA, Connect will want to see the income match. Can you imagine that? Bloody cheap. Again, as Mr Morley points out, one question leads to another. You might be able to satisfy HMRC that the vehicle was bought with cash, with a cash gift, he said. But you can then expect it to ask, you can then expect to it ask who gave you the gift. And if it was an inheritance, whether the appropriate tax was paid. They ain't romping. Entries on Facebook and Twitter are not routinely chored by Connect, experts say, but if you become the subject of an investigation, you can expect these to be examined for evidence of spending, travel or ownership of property and other assets. Other countries' tax systems are integrating their own versions of Connect with ours, the UK, to facilitate what colloquially is dubbed as a global swap shop of everyone's personal financial data. In theory, the data should always flow to the country where the individual is resident for tax purposes. So HMRC would share data with another country only if the individual is due to pay tax there. In turn, HMRC would want bank account data from, say, South Africa, where it is related to taxpayer residents there. And HMRC turns up the heat on landlords. This is just not a little bit left. We are seeing a shift of responsibility from the tax collector to the taxpayer, he said. In the past, a taxman would tell you what you owe. Today, it's up to you to declare what you should be paying. And the HMRC has the means to check that what you are saying is complete and correct. But what about, well, it's not fair because this forces people to have an accountant. And, you know, but the thing is, if you try to do it yourself and you make a mistake, you're up the creek without a paddle, aren't you? HMRC is targeting tax evaders such as ghosts and moonlighters to a new 100 billion super computer called Connect. So I don't know what that 60 million, that 80 million was before, because this is saying 100 billion is the cost of this computer which is designed to pursue those whose income and expenditure do not appear to be balanced. Contributor David Redfern, Managing Director of DSR Tax Claims Limited. That's what he said. People who are concerned that an individual or a company is attempting to evade their tax responsibilities can call the confidential HMRC tax evasion line on 0800 788887.
So that's it. I'm, I'm exhausted. I, you know, sometimes when I have to read all that stuff, I mean, it's quite exhausting. But, you know, it is important that, you know, people know. So that just didn't, um, that just didn't um, share information about YouTubers, but it shares information with tax across the board. So I think I'll retitle this. Take care now. Bye bye.